couple of cases in you. Uh, one will start off with the city. Matt, if you'll be ready to present that as CU 2018-4. You will present that, please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a conditional use request by Mr. and Mrs. Orendo for a small motel facility in CD zoning. The property is located at 120 North Patterson Street. This is at the northwest corner of North Patterson and Benny's Alley. Um, it is a two-story building. The upstairs is the applicant's personal residence. Um, the downstairs is a commercial use that is currently occupied by a business called The Book and Table, which is a bookstore and a small cafe. The applicant is proposing to use the back portion of that first floor as a small motel uh, with three lodging rooms. Um, that are smaller than typical lodging rooms, uh, what the applicant calls European style, um, and motel type facilities require conditional use in CD zoning. Um, subject property, as you can see, is part of the downtown urban core. It is in the local historic district. It is also in the downtown commercial national register district. Um, but the building itself is not what we call a contributing resource but it went through renovation several years ago where they added the second floor um, and I actually think it blends in more with the downtown uh, streetscape than it used to. Um, here's the floor plan which is in your packet. This is for the first floor. It shows the commercial use in the front and you see a series of rooms in the back. Um, subject property looks like this from across the street. You may recall from the work session we talked about the fuzzy thing in the front, that is not my head. Um, my head would not look like that from the top. Um, but what I thought was interesting is when Google does their street view imagery, you see the vehicle that rides around with the big camera on top. Well, in the downtown area, they did the same thing by walking on the sidewalks. They did not drive the streets, they actually walked the sidewalks. So this was the cameraman, I'm not sure how he was carrying the gadget, but he was walking through Benny's Alley. So the image, the best I could get, to see sort of looking down the alley and around, and I thought it was kind of interesting anyway. Uh, this is from uh, about a year ago. But it shows the property. This is looking west across Patterson. You see the red brick building. That is the subject property, and you see the two floors with the ground floor being a little bit larger. Other pictures um, taken recently. This is the view of the south wall along Benny's Alley. Of course, you see the entrance off of Patterson Street. You also see another entrance that's off of Bendy's Alley. This is the primary entrance used for the residents. And then from the west side, which is the North Coombe Street parking lot, this is the same building. So it is very much nestled in downtown. Um, some adjacent properties. This is the storefront immediately to the north. Um, the radio station and fitness center property that's across the alley to the south. Diagonally across the street, I think this is where Clientel used to be located. And then the other building on the other side of Denny's Alley, this is diagonally to the northeast um, across the street. Um, in your packet is the listing of conditions. Staff is recommending approval of this after finding it consistent with the conditional use review criteria and our uh, conference plan. And these three conditions are as follows. Approval shall be granted in the name of the applicant only for a motel facility and CD zoning for temporary lodging of transient guests for periods not to exceed two days per stay. Number two, the facility shall be limited to no more than three lodging rooms with a maximum total of four guests and these shall operate under its own business license. Updated floor plans for the entire building shall be submitted and approved by the city building official and fire marshal. That last sentence is something that was added in since the work session that was at the specific request of the fire marshal. They are still going through a planned review and permitting process for these rooms to get them up to code for fire and ADA requirements and it is still an ongoing process. Um, when the building was renovated several years ago that was under a different fire marshal and so the current fire marshal is wanting a better picture of the whole building. So that's why the language of that one sentence. Number three, conditional use approval shall expire after one year from the date of approval if no request for a separate business license has been submitted by that date. Standard expiration date type language. Um, the applicants are here. If you have any questions for them, but if you have questions for me, I'll be glad to entertain those. Could you go back to the, the rear uh, of the building? I don't, I don't want to direct this question to you, then, Commissioner Gladden. Uh, Slim, I'm sure you probably familiar with it. 
actually I am, and I was going to mention that I have been in the past with the architect in the project. I'm not currently involved with this application, but so I feel that I need to uh, recuse myself from the development process. But I'm, I would be willing to answer questions. So on, on, the, on the picture shown, mm -hmm. the, the, the red part of this building is what we see here. So this, correct, this is an exterior wall. Right. That, that's a one story, and what's within it is, and it is an outside space. So okay. this is open. So, so my, qu my, that's question, a courtyard. my so. question to you is, is I know we discussed this last week on one of the units that doesn't have, uh, you know, just egress on mm -hmm. but the, the, the thing on the back of the, our drawing on the back of the plan is showing three exterior doors, but do I just not see them on the back of this thing? No, you are seeing all of the, so let's let's look at that. So if you see room A, which is room 14, there, that's a door, that's an exterior door that goes directly to that courtyard. Do you see that? Okay. Room B has an exterior door that also goes directly to that courtyard. Okay. That room C, my understanding, and the applicant is here, again, I'm not involved with that, but my understanding is that um, there is a... a uh, window, an exit or an egress window is being installed in room C facing Benny's Alley to provide uh, direct escape from that room to the exterior. And I believe, and the, and the applicant will be able to explain that. Go back to the rear, please, <coughs> So we just not seeing the balance of the exterior doors in the rear. You though. can't see them in here because oh, that exterior door okay. Okay. is actually, it opens <coughs> to the court. Gotcha. That's my question, just to clarify mm -hmm. the egress on stuff. Mm -hmm. The courtyard is walled in instead of gated okay. in or fenced in, so it's a little mm -hmm. bit different. They have vegetation there. In fact, if you look at one of the pictures, see the, see the, tree. See the eucalyptus tree growing up yes. through it mm -hmm. from within the courtyard. Um, this shot, which is along Benny's Alley, you see the doorway in the middle along the alley. Mm -hmm. yes, and to the left of that is where the, the common wall is with room C. And they've already submitted designs and got approved by Historic Preservation Commission to put an escape window there. You know, very nice design. It looks like it has always been part of the building. And part of what we talked about at the work session, too, this project has been going through several processes. One is conditional use, which is through you and uh, City Council. Um, Historic Preservation Commission had to take action on the proposed change to the exterior wall. And the other one is some variances um, to the motel standards, which will be heard by the Zoom Board of Appeals next week. And that's the third process. And so it's a complicated little thing for a small building. Um, but it is for a motel to share space on the ground floor. And like we talked about at the work session, it's sort of a prototype. You don't have one of these currently in downtown. But downtown is supposed to be a mixed use type pattern. So this fits in very well. And we'd like to see how this works. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. What's the reasoning behind two days stay? I mean, if you had a business person that wanted to come and stay it's, there for a... It's to keep limits on it. There's been some concerns expressed about this becoming an extended stay, ordering onto a boarding house, that type of arrangement, which I really I don't understand that. that. But two days? Proposal, but a two-day transient stay. Okay. I don't totally agree with that, but that's whatever. We'd like to extend that just a little bit. So we, we discussed a little bit of that last week between that and stay and the amount of people, only four people we discussed that last week. Yeah. So, any other questions for staff? Still Still Yeah. There being none. Anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request to come forward this time? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Good evening, sir. You don't mind saying your name and address for the record, sir? Yes, Jeff Michael Lane Duff, 140 North Harris Street. Is this microphone on? No. Oh. Is it? I guess I can spot down like this. Oh, All right. I would have the same problem, sir. <laughs> That's, That's okay, I'm used to it. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, thank you for allowing me to come before you to speak briefly in favor of this. I want to start by thanking Matt Martin and all the staff at the Planning and Zoning. Um, they've been very helpful in going through, as he said, what is a kind of complicated and un unprecedented thing. 
We're grateful that they have recommended approval of the request. Um, the staff recommends three conditions. We have no uh, issue with the conditional approval subject to a separate business license, nor with providing updated architectural drawings to the city building and the, and the fire market. We do, however, want to request a, a change in the other two conditions that they're recommending. Um, first, let me say that we do not disagree with what we take to be the spirit of those other two. Um, those other two conditions, we have no interest in running an apartment building or a boarding house. Uh, we don't want a VSU fraternity renting all three rooms for a weekend uh, with 20 party goers. Um, but we do think that um, the temporary lodging of transient guests for a period not to exceed two days is a, is a bit um, too restrictive. Um, let me just give you a couple of examples. We had an artist uh, who came and stayed with us, and he, had, he was a photographer, and he had a show that he was mounting at the Turner Center. Uh, he lives in Atlanta somewhere. He came down one night, stayed with us that night. He went the next day to the Turner Center and spent all day mounting the show. Then he came back to us, slept the second night. I think that was a Sunday. The third, was a, the third day was a Monday. Uh, the show was up. The, the reception, maybe some of you attended it. They do this the first night the show was up. It was that night, Monday night, so he didn't go back to Atlanta. He spent the night went back the next day, so he was here for three days. Um, there are many cases of people who, who come <coughs> and have that kind of situation. Uh, we had a gentleman that maybe some of you may know, his name is David Hobbs. He grew up here in town. His, he now lives uh, over on the coast, I think, in Brunswick. His mother is a resident at the uh, Langdale place. Uh, he came here to be with her. He was here for four nights because he wanted to spend more time with his mother. The fact of the matter is that the, that the two-day thing is not a big issue because the vast majority of our people are there for one night. Um, most of our customers are traveling down 75 to Florida or back from Florida. But we would like to have the flexibility for the kind of cases I just mentioned. And so we wouldn't mind having that restriction if there was some sort of a limit on it, like say the two day stays, the two, it stays over two days be limited to no more than 10% of the total stays or <coughs> something like that. You know, or just a higher number. Yeah, just, 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 just a higher number, yes. Or a higher number, yeah. Um, the second one that, that one of you mentioned uh, was that the facility should be limited to no more than four guests. If we're approved for three rooms, um, it's going to be difficult. Uh, the only way we could have four guests in some cases would be to simply not rent one of the rooms, which is uh, obviously not a good thing for us. We, we don't have any problem with the number of adults. We do get children. Uh, we get uh, couples uh, traveling with children. So um, if a couple and a small child come here, and we've had many cases of that sort, and we had the three rooms, then that would mean that we could rent a second, one of the second rooms for one person only, and the third room would remain vacant. Um, and sometimes it's, I'll try to keep this short, sometimes it's difficult to know. We have a guest named Judy Wolf. She's from Atlanta. She's a physical therapist. She stayed with us three times uh, prior to recently, one night each time. She leaves Atlanta where she works, comes down here, arrives late at night, gets up in the morning and leaves. She's a perfect guest, no problems. <laughs> you don't have to deal with her. She comes late, checks in, leaves in the morning, goes to SGMC and works with special patients. She has a special kind of therapy. And then after she's gone, she goes home. So she's here one night. She showed up on Friday of last week again, and I thought it was the same deal. She showed up with her two kids, and she went and did therapy. Her mother, who lives around here, came and took care of the two kids, and then the next day they made a vacation of it. We didn't know she was bringing the two kids. Under this rule, we would have had to send her away, basically, if the other, because the other room had two people in it. So we're not trying to, you know, I think the spirit of the thing is right, and if we can just get the numbers a little different, we would be happy to bring our statistics from Airbnb, which is the, the site that we use to rent it, and, and let the staff look at those, and and we're, we're some sort of thing, but we don't want to get in a situation where we're 
forced not to rent a room because we need to we need to make some income to pay for the investment in the room. All of the rest of this is, is very good, and we appreciate all of the work that the staff has done and, and their help. We wouldn't have been able to negotiate this without them. Uh, it's probably old hat to you, but with us and a lot of people out there going through this, it's, it's kind of complicated. I'll be happy to answer this question. Mr. Ward, I mean, the, the two conditions that you mentioned that we discussed at our work session last week were exactly the two conditions that we talked about. And I know Matt did speak up and say, you know, throw a number out there too right. also. But on the second part of it, what do you think it is? Are, are you looking for like two guests per room per night? Is that Would that I, be reasonable? I, I would think two adults per night. So um, if they bring a child. So if they bring a child. I mean, we've had couples with young children, you know, like toddlers that sleep in the bed with them. And, um, but I certainly wouldn't want more than two adults in each room. But if we had two adults in each room, uh, that's probably, as I say, most of the time we have one or two people and it's for one night. So we're talking about the exception pattern. Okay. Do you have questions for the presenter? Commissioner Go ahead. I've got one. <clears throat> on uh, number one, the condition number one, as far as the time of stay, if you had to request, what would you request? I would I would make some request that there be some exception to the the two day exception. The two day stay covers probably ninety percent, but I would I would request that there be like a percentage so that on those cases where someone comes for four or five days because they've got business in town they're not forced to go somewhere else well, when you say percentage what are you talking about I don't know that 90 percent of the stays would be two days or less okay right. I'm just throwing out a number uh -huh. well, that, that gets into a monitoring yeah. thing that, yeah. we, that we can't yeah. do yeah. so I mean would you just would you feel comfortable at four or five days I mean, that's, that's something I don't know if you, Commissioner, did you say that or the presenter say that? I, I don't know. How. I'm, I'm just curious. Instead of percentage, we'd rather have an actual day. Okay. Um, yes, that would be better. We don't, if you, you know, if you go to, to four or five days, then you're in a situation where we almost never have anybody that stays that long. <laughs> Mr. Mark knows this. We had a person who stayed three weeks. And he was the guest of the city and paid for by the city. So. <laughs> he was the artist that was working on the Franklin Park, uh, no, Smith Park, uh, the little uh, triangular park over there, not far from City Hall. There's a public art project out there, and he wanted to stay downtown because he he was supposed to involve the public, and so he was there for three weeks. But that's that almost never happens. Um, well, I was going to ask what Commissioner Willis asked, but Matt, how does that um, play into the hotel guidelines you had mentioned? Yeah, it, it, the hotel and hotels allow for longer periods of stay. The idea okay. was to make this pure transient. Okay. I would be, you know, two was just the temporary number thrown out there. Um, I'm certainly amenable to increasing that, and I would actually suggest maybe seven days per stay, make it an even week. Yeah. Um, to me, that's still temporary. Exactly. It's not quite too apartments or boarding house, that type of thing. And if you have someone that's working here longer term, say an auditor is here auditing a business and they're usually here for a week, then they're covered. That gives them a full week. And since, Matt, since you're bending just a little bit, can we address the next thing down where it says total of four guests? Can we, can we look at that and, and go by the recommendation of two adults per room? Um, I already made notes to that effect, trying to help you all with the motion. Um, Number two could possibly read the facility shall be limited to no more than three lodging rooms with a maximum total of um, two adults per room. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that is that parentheses um, not including children? Okay. okay, just so it's clear that we're not precluding children from staying here. I don't want to do that. And, and to quite honestly, where that four came from is me looking at the floor plan. I've seen two very small rooms, I'm thinking one person. In the larger room, I'm thinking two people. Um, they, although this is European style and sometimes they are, people, they are it's style. like cruise ship rooms, sometimes you can get yes. a lot of people <laughs> in there. Mr. Warnoff, you, you, you've heard what Matt has 
and let us propose. I said, are you okay with these new yes, decisions, sir. sir? Yes, sir, I am. So we're looking at seven days max per day, two adults, not including children, per, yes, per visit. Yes, sir. Any other questions for our presenter? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, is anyone here wishing to speak? Well, let me ask, is anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Come forward. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? There being not any here, anyone here this evening wishing to speak against this request? Anyone wishing to speak against this request? There being none. Commissioners, any discussion on this before I ask for a motion? There being no discussion, I'll have to ask for a motion at this time on this request. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Willis. Um, I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval of the conditional use permit with the three conditions at the bottom with a correction on number one to say either one week, not to exceed one week or seven days, and number two, a maximum of two adults per room in parentheses not including children and the last, which should be three, I think, instead of another number two, we'll leave it the same. Okay, I see that. Okay. Well, I'll we'll see it. That was a typo on the original. <coughs> I wouldn't go bring that up, but that's okay. Right. I've already fixed it. Yes, sir. All right, so we have a motion. Do I have a second on this? I got a second on this. Any discussion before I ask for a show of hands? Any discussion on the motion and the second? There being none, all in favor of the motion, please signify by raise your hand. That is six, all opposed. And she has stepped aside, so it's six zero. It passes as different. Who is the second on that motion? Jody. Oh, man, you did a great job on that. We appreciate you on that. We will proceed with last.